Hi, my name is Christopher David Mitchell and today there's going to be an interview episode with a lovely woman called Leola where we talk about how to get better romance and better sex in your life even if you feel a bit insecure. So for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Christopher Dave Mitchell and I have a video, My Survival Story Living with an Ileostomy Bag, where basically through life-saving operations and living with an Ileostomy Bag for the rest of my life, there were some challenges I faced in the dating world, in the romance world, in the sexual intimacy world. My confidence really went. Luckily, I've overcome that now in lots of ways, but I wanted to get this guest Leola on today so that if you're struggling at all with your dating, your romance, your sexual intimacy, because maybe you're feeling insecure about your body in some way, you could have what I have, an ileostomy bag, or maybe you don't, but maybe you just don't feel confident within your body and uh, confident with your partner. So hopefully this episode will be really beneficial for you. So let's start the video. Today I talk Tantra with Christopher David Mitchell. He is a transformation coach. I am so grateful to have been connected to him and to his content and so appreciative that he is here on the podcast to offer his perspective of living an expansive life. So thank you for being here, Christopher. Why don't you start by telling us a bit about your story, how you discovered spirituality, how you found your purpose, how you got into to working in the transformation space? Yeah, of course. Thanks. Um, yeah. It really happened from a health uh, sort of disaster, really. Um, I talked about this on my channel and, and I expressed my health video, but just in short, it, it was, uh, it was, I had a, a condition called ulcerative colitis and that was part of inflammatory bowel disease. And basically, um, you know, in my twenties, I'd have an ileostomy bag. Some people might know that as a colostomy bag. So the basics of it is I had a near death experience um at 27 and also at 31 years old and i think that suffering and trauma like really pushed me into spirituality like i was at such a a low point that i needed sort of personal development and self-help just to sort of get through because i was struggling so much with emotions and stuff and anyway I, at first i was actually a singing coach a voice coach and then <laughs> one day in 2019 i decided to tell my health story to the world. It's the video is called my survival story living with an ileostomy bag. And it had 3 million views on YouTube. And that was the transformation in and of itself of me sort of opening up becoming more authentic. And from that realizing there was a higher purpose to my coaching in helping people through sort of overcoming adversity, transform their lives. So yeah, it was really through near-death experience and trauma that sort of pushed me on the, the spiritual path, really. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing all of that. And, and how has this, I've obviously listened to your story, which is beautiful, so emotional, put so many things into perspective and incredible. So everyone that's, you know, listening to, to this podcast, I definitely recommend checking out, you know, his, his video on YouTube, which we'll, we'll link at the end and I'll put in the show notes. But you'd also had a video that was kind of about, um, um, dating and things like that. And I'd love to just touch in, to touch in on how that experience has been for you. Yeah, exactly. And this is why I want, you know, your wisdom, <laughs> I'm going to pick your brain on this because I think that when you have, um, you know, an ileostomy bag, something physically on your body, or just when you're even unwell from a physical condition, the physical health then affects the mental health, how you feel emotionally. And I know that for years, I really did struggle. Um, I was single when I was going through this and I struggled dating again. I struggled, you know, when, when do I tell someone about this? How do I tell someone about this? When's the right time? Um, and just from now, people who I interact with, I know struggle so much with, you know, confidence within their body, you know, and just also just feeling like they're able to be intimate when you maybe have some sort of physical part of you that you quote unquote don't like at the time. Um, so I know so many people struggle with it. So I want more wisdom with you on it. Um, and I did struggle for years on that. I'd say honestly about four years. Yeah. It was four years of real struggle where I was just, 
really not confident with any part of dating or being intimate uh you know with a woman and uh luckily it's better now but obviously if i'd had you at the beginning i might have you know done that in a short frame of uh, time than four years yeah it is the beauty of having a coach with anything i truly believe that we're all able to be our own guru and to heal and things like that but how is how incredible is it to have a mirror in front of you that's showing you you know some tools that can go a lot faster which is super incredible uh one last piece on the ileostomy bag am i saying that correct ileostomy yeah ileostomy if you wouldn't mind just kind of like what is that what does that mean just for the listeners on on my side that have no idea kind of what that even means yeah no it's cool um it's actually more popular to hear of a colostomy bag um, and they're similar, but colostomy is a colostomy bag is more like the Rolls Royce of bags. Um, but basically, colostomy is linked to the colon. So it's at the bottom of your uh, bowel. You've got the small bowel, the ilium, mm -hmm. ileostomy, and then you've got the colon. So at the end, so a colostomy bag, you know, you wouldn't have to empty it as often because you've got the whole passage, generally, maybe some gaps in your digest digestive system. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got a colon anymore. That got taken out at that near death experience, so the whole thing's gone. So at the end of my small intestine, basically, there's a bag on my stomach, and that's how I go to the toilet for a, you know number two now. And obviously, that takes some getting used to. But the funny thing is now I can't even remember what it was like originally. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's been so many years. So it's going to the toilet in a different way, which again which is why I want, you know, your insights um, that could have helped, particularly that like toilet and, you know, you know, poo and, you know, all that stuff that's really not sexy or hard to even discuss anyway. But when like your illness is formed around that and you feel like so unsexy, like that's when it's hard to, to do anything. So it's not a, it's not a quote unquote cool thing, colostomy, ileostomy, but um, you know, it's nice that I put out the health video because people who are younger like me were like, oh, I didn't realize. I thought it was just old people and I was the only young person. So I struggled after I went to all the surgery of not feeling great about myself and my body. And I was like, oh, how am I going to go back to dating? How am I going to be? Maybe I'll never be sexual with anyone ever again. Like these thoughts really do go through your head when you're in that sort of space of you know you've been through hospital and you've been through surgeries or you just and you've suddenly got a physical illness so i wish i'd had someone like you to sort of help me through because it took so many years for me to process that um but you know before we go into it more with questions just tell everyone you know a bit about you what you do um yeah and just a bit of background Beautiful. So I'm a sacred intimacy mentor and muse. I work a lot with the foundations of Tantra, which is an Eastern sort of practice with, you know, many different lineages based on the idea of living a life of expansion. Tantra etymologically means method for expansion. Um, and there's so many different ways to tap into this energy, but primarily it's about fully accepting yourself, living in the present and living with intention. It's a really liberating space because there's no right or wrong. It's about tapping into your highest truth and finding ways to live in alignment with that. Uh, that being said, our uh, sexual energy, our erotic energy is the energy that created me. It, you know, created Christopher, it creates all of us, you know, it even creates, you know, the food that we're eating and it creates, you know, the fibers that uh, our clothes are made out of, you know, sexual interactions between plants, things like that. So when we start to see that this energy touches every aspect of our life, we recognize that it's often the root of a lot of our problems as well. Uh, we see that the sexual energy is able to be, you know, applied to every, every part of our life. And it's actually not inherently sexual or erotic because again, it's, you know, even this idea of, you know, flowers interacting and creating fruit, it's not, you know, this naughty thing. It's actually this really divine innate part of, of our mm -hmm. humanity. And when we tap into that and we can channel this energy into healing, into manifestation, into, you know, living a more um, pleasure filled and present life in all aspects. Uh, that's really what Tantra is about. And it's also about, you know, al alchemizing the pain into this pleasure. Like how can we make something beautiful out of our trauma? How can we trust our trauma? And that is a big part of co-creating in relationships as well yeah cool well this sounds perfect then um because 
Yeah, like I say, I think from my story, a lot of people have probably had some trauma, some form of adversity, some form of, you know, difficulties from, you know, an illness or just overcoming some challenges. So this would be great. So I just want to get into it straight away then and just ask you that, I guess for me back in the day that when I first had a physical illness, let's not even like, we'll go to the ileostomy bag stuff for later. But first, like if you, once if you're just not feeling well, so before I got the ileostomy bag, obviously I was just not feeling well. I was ill and I felt tired and lethargic because I had this illness and I wasn't feeling well. And even then, so we're going back before the life saving surgery, I suppose for a year before I had that, how do you, um, how do you go about sort of being confident you know, either sexually with your partner or even as you're dating, if you're going through like an illness and say your energy's low, you're tired, um, how how would you cope with with that aspect? Yeah, beautiful question. I think the first thing is just to really be um, in resonance with your body, to be listening to your body, to be aware of signs that things are off. And to me, I think just generally speaking, our culture in the Western world really teaches us to, you know, not pay as much attention to that or try to cover it up with a simple fix rather than taking the time to be very curious and open to the signs that we're, we're being given um, and, and to really prioritize that as well. So that being said, um, listen to your body. And that's a huge part of Tantra. Also about not even feeling you know, physically ill, but, you know, being in touch with how, how your energy is shifting, how your body is reacting, tensing in regards to different um, uh, aspects of, of your being different relationships that you're opening your, yourself up to as well is super mm. important. Um, you know, especially in regards to feeling safe and feeling supported, uh, by the people in your life, um, going a step beyond that feeling a sense of, you know, confidence with yourself in these, in these situations. I, I think what it really comes down to is seeing that your inner world or your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. Um, another way that this is this is uh, spoken about in um, various communities is that um, as above, so below. So when you're seeing that you're having issues with confidence in the ways that you're relating to other people, it's mm -hmm. likely that you're having issues having confidence with in your relationship with yourself. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, for sure. Because I don't know if this is what you're hint hinting on, but like when I first started. Um, recovering and I, and uh, from my illness and sort of came out of hospital I felt like the easy thing for me to do would be get some affection quickly off someone else and a partner um, but I actually spent quite a lot of time on my own and maybe that was one of my cures because I was like okay I need to actually get confident within myself first before I start dating again although that did take a lot of years so there was a lot of patience to it but uh, yeah, I definitely think that helped, but it was tempting because, you know, when you want a bit of love and affection, it's hard to still stay on your own at certain times. Mm -hmm. Um, but I definitely did. I mean, I was single for, you know, quite a few years and um, not because there weren't some options available as it were with partners, but because I just sort of knew that I wasn't comfortable within myself and my, and my body at that time. Yeah, I think that from a very young age, we're told that the uh, best way to find love is outwards and that we need to perform in certain ways to even receive that love, whether it's from our parents or from our teachers or, or from society in general, when in reality, we're moving into a time that really comes from autonomy and, and building this within ourselves. And this isn't to say that we don't need people. Um, we need people to grow. We need people to be mirrors for our journey. That mm -hmm. being said, we also need to take responsibility for our ability to um, provide this for ourselves and to also figure out what we actually really need and prefer or desire and what our boundaries are. And I think that it's really important for people to get super clear on that um, before opening themselves up to others and also to see how they can provide those needs and desires for themselves because you know, life is so fleeting that these, you know, relationships can, can be evolving, you know, at, at any sort of rate and can be, mm -hmm. 
the, the energy can be shifting and, you know, the needs might not be able to be provided by another person at any time, whether it's, you know, things have changed in their life, maybe they're not a part of your life anymore, etc. cetera. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, yeah, the right timing and all that for sure. And, and not needing it either. Like I always say, it's got to be a want, not a need. <laughs> um, even though sexual intimacy is a need, but if, if it becomes too needy, then yeah, then it's a repellent as well, maybe. Um, so say like, let's, let's, let's go the next step. So say some, someone like me had, you know, an ileostomy bag or someone had something about their physical body that they really didn't like, and they felt really insecure about, and it was affecting their self-esteem. I mean, you know, from my health video, I do get a lot of messages from people, particularly women, which maybe we'll talk about why, who say, you know, I don't, I've, I don't feel attractive anymore. I've got an ileostomy bag or I don't like my body anymore. I, you know, I don't think I'll ever find a partner of again. What would be sort of the message to someone of how they could heal or cure that part of them that just feels so unattractive because their life's changed? Maybe it's in a physical, you know, way like a bag or in some way like that. And they're just, really don't have any confidence to even think anyone's going to find them attractive again. Beautiful. What comes to me is that um, we need to recognize that we are inherently worthy of love and appreciation, regardless of what's happening in and around our body. Our bodies are, again, fleeting parts of our reality. It's our souls. You know, for, this is my perspective. This is my truth. Our souls yeah. transcend this lifetime. And so it's more about connecting in with like, what energy are you bringing to the world? I relate to this and in, in, and I think that this is another moment to see how this conversation transcends one specific experience that has to do with, you know, illness. But for me, the thing that I had to get over that happened to my body was sexual assault. So for mm -hmm. me, even though I healed my own belief around sexual assault, I found that when I had to communicate that to a partner, it was something that I felt like I needed to rationalize or I had to explain mm -hmm. myself, which, which showed me that I hadn't really healed all those parts of myself because there was a deep down a part of myself that still felt like I did something wrong to have had this experience happen to me or there's something wrong with me or I'm yes. damaged goods which is the narrative that has you know often been per perpetuated in our society so it came back to seeing if I'm lacking the confidence in this space and I'm attracting people that are perpetuating that narrative it says more about what's really going on deep down. I actually haven't healed my belief around this. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Again, it's back to, you know, being comfortable within yourself first before you go out there meeting other people, because no one out there is going to cure how you really feel about yourself. And yeah, I mean, like I say, it's an energy thing. Uh, um, I've talked about this on my channel dating with uh, with an ileostomy bag that I used to come up and I used to be so nervous, like saying to people, uh, I, I've got, 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 got something to tell you, like I've, I've got an ileostomy bag. Um, and I realize now that because they knew that my energy, like I wasn't cool with it and I had some issues, then it was an issue for them. Mm -hmm. But now that it's really not an issue for me and I've accepted it within myself, I can confidently just say it and I'm cool. Like, and because they can feel that I'm cool with it, then they're cool with it. So that was like one of my big lessons. Um, yeah, I, I also think that it's about like trusting that your trauma or traumatic experience or healing journey, whatever it is, is mm -hmm. also a gift to the person that you're sharing it with and they they can accept that gift and they can reject that gift and that's up to them but to me you know saying something like i experienced this is an opportunity for you know this potential partner to learn more about the human experience to learn more about the world for me it was you know learning or, or gifting you know a potential partner the opportunity to talk about things like you know radical consent and how how you know how common it is for you know sexual mm. harassment or assault to be a part of reality and mm -hmm. and what can you, what can we learn from this in terms of making someone feel safe in this space even after trauma so it's a gift to um to allow someone to learn through that with you as well i'm not sure if you experienced something similar kind of with your experience well you're around pretty evolved people <laughs> it sounds and um, i think you've got to be around and, and find the right people um 
you know, it takes quite an emotionally intelligent person to uh, be accepting sometimes of some of that. I mean, it depends where you're at. It depends who you're hanging around with. You know, if you're hanging around with uh, some people who are fortunately a bit more materialistically minded and then they're a materialistic way of seeing the world, it's harder to go on that authentic expression of communication okay. together. But if if you're if you're going down and you see someone's a bit more spiritual, you know, I always find that, you know, if I know that they're meditating or if I know that they're, you know, doing some breath work and some yoga, I'm like, they're probably going to understand. So I find that, you know, there's not everyone will, like you say, um, mm -hmm. accept and understand. But yeah, you got to find the right people as well. Um, and that that's been a challenge for me. Yeah. Um, that's been a challenge for me because before I got ill, I was in a very materialistic like showbiz. And, you know, a lot of people did actually leave me um, just even friendships wise, because it's it's one of them slightly material like, you know, it's it's a lot of it's based on social status. So when you're up and doing well and you've got you're in like a West End show, it's great. But when you're not, there's not many who stayed with me on the journey. But what I find is you just need to find a new tribe, like a new set of people. Mm -hmm. And 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 they're actually, you know, can be loving and great with you. So, you know, I think it's important to find the right people as well, which can take time. Yeah. Um, well, what I was going to ask was, I wanted to touch on that woman, uh, the, the women's perspective. Because um, like I say, when people I find are more insecure about, you know, their body or finding a partner again, maybe after some element of, of physical or emotional trauma, it's mainly women. Do you think that's a coincidence or could it be like one of my ideas could be, you know how uh, there's life coaches like Tony Robbins talk about masculine and feminine energy and how he would generally stereotype. I wonder what you think about this, that men are more attracted to um, uh, looks and image. It's what he would generally say. And that women are more attracted to sort of, you know, leadership and status and, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, is there something that's inherent genetically within a woman where they're more self conscious about their body than men or is it just a bit more coincidence that most people who struggle with this are women probably more so than men i've found yeah i definitely have some good thoughts on that i i would love to touch back a bit more on the find your tribe sort of thing too if that's okay yeah. because i also had so i I had someone leave me the day after I told them about my sexual assault and it was uh, highly traumatic. So uh, I, to I totally understand yeah. the frustration around rejection when you're being so vulnerable. And yeah. to me, what I found is that it's a gift again, also that they're leaving. It's telling you, it's telling you what's really important to them. And so mm -hmm. at, it, it, it's, it's being able to touch in with yourself and not take it personally and say, you know, they're just not on my level yet. Like that's yeah. okay. That's fine. So just let them go. Um, there's an episode of my podcast where I talked about this whole experience. It's called growing through ghosting. If anyone wants more information on like what happens when you feel rejected after, after you're super vulnerable, vulnerable, um, mm. which I would say to touch in on, but definitely the right people for you are going to love and unconditionally accept your body. And especially if you're in a space where you're willing to grow through your own relationship with what's going on, then you're fine. I think yeah. that as long as you're coming from that perspective, whatever someone else does or says is just an opportunity for you to see if they're really living in resonance with the growth, the growth journey that you're on. Yeah, Do you feel, yeah, totally. Yeah. Cool. That being said, talking about kind of the feminine perspective in something like body, body, uh, conscious, um, body, I don't even, it's not like body image is even the right necessary, necessarily the right kind of descriptor for what, what, you know, would be the, um, the experience with someone with an ileostomy bag. Yeah, or just anything that they don't like about their physical body. Yeah, obviously there's different levels of like expression that occurs here or different experiences. I don't even think level is the right word because it really is totally 
everyone's experiencing themselves in a completely different way. Um, so that being said to me, I think that it has less to do with like masculine and feminine, like genetics or how we're like born and things like that. I think it has more to do with the, um, perspective that, uh, society and patriarchy has projected onto women, which is okay. that one of the only things that we have, um, to offer one of the values that people appreciate about the feminine or the acceptable values is, body is beauty right? right so women aren't as appreciated for their you know intuition or their you know wild chaotic beautiful fluid expression um you know they're really only valued for their ability to nurture um and and to be beautiful and to you know follow a leader essentially whereas there's right. so many other expressions of the feminine that in my perspective have been um kind of um reeled in whereas we're coming into a time where that can be unleashed and there are so many other parts of your femininity that are super valuable that go beyond your body yeah 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 but it's interesting you're right you were making me think of like aphrodite or stuff like that back in the day what wasn't it i mean i don't know too much about all that but it was i mean i went to rome and it's all i mean it's beautiful men in sculptures to be fair actually in rome but a lot of it is about the female body as well when you know so there's maybe all that, but I think Tony Robbins would, I mean, he's not, you know, he, he's, he's not probably right on everything, but you talk about that feminine energy sort of like being genetically in there through the years of, of being the, I, I, I don't know. I just, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? How much of it is, is like in us with a sort of feminine any energy genetically, or how much is it, you know, like society and what, you know, and if we were in a different country, would it be seen differently, et cetera, et cetera, which it is in some countries, isn't it? You know, um, yeah. you know, if you went out to the Middle East, I mean, you know, women are sort of not, you know, on show as much. So it's, it's probably a lot of factors to it. I just, I just noticed that it's more always women who seem to be more insecure. Uh, men still have issues with it, but they don't seem to care as much. It's just been an interesting thing um, when I've coached other people on it but yeah i think it's yeah it's a good one it could be a few things it could be mixture of yeah it's always the nature nurture argument anyway isn't it um cool so for everyone listening i mean i don't know even too much about it tell us a bit about uh tantra tantra and sort of how particularly maybe on the sort of story here of you know maybe some some trauma emotionally or physically how like this approach or technique uh, might help uh, someone? Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful question. So again, to me, Tantra is really about touching in with uh, presence and intention. Um, and especially when you look at something like the opportunity to heal body image, it's, it's taking moments to see that this one part of your body is not your whole body. And it's also not your whole, you know, expression of humanity. And to me, Tantra touches in on, you know, sexual intimacy, but also physical intimacy that isn't sexual, emotional intimacy, spiritual intimacy, and intellectual intimacy. And when you, you know, can follow in with some of the practices or the rituals that are involved with Tantra, um, you're moving beyond the typical narrative that is like, okay, we make out and then we like roughly get undressed and then like we press our bodies together and, you know, then it, there's like a moment of climax where one or both, who knows who's going to, you know, be able to orgasm in that experience. And then it's typically over relatively quickly. And in this space with Tantra, it's about, you know, taking the time to create, you know, layers of intimacy so first maybe opening with something that's just like you know having eye contact that's super you know spiritually mm -hmm. and emotionally intimate and then you know taking the time to appreciate the body in in all spaces and layers so you're you know yeah seeing that there's erogenous zones on the ears and on the ankle and you know it can depend on the partner but you know taking your time to really explore the body and see the intricacies of you know pleasure that, that are available there that go beyond you know again this like we're, we're putting all the pressure you know right in our groin area which you know is likely where you know the bag is so it's like there's so much more here and then you know taking the time to do things like you know yoni or lingam worship which is really seeing that like how beautiful 
is this part of your body that's attached to your body that has, you know, things that you might feel insecure about and, and making space to see that there's so much depth mm here that goes beyond the limiting perspective of your trauma does that mm. make sense yeah for sure that's what i need in my life because like i say i always even before i was ill i always felt like just me being authentic here i always felt very transactional with mm -hmm. my sexual experiences i you know there was times i remember i don't mind sharing this it was a time when you know, I had, I had sex with a very, very attractive woman. And it was almost like that peak experience where it's like you get your dream car. Like, yeah. sorry, sorry to say it like that. I don't mean it like that. But but this is when I, my attitude changed because this was years ago. We're talking over 10 years ago here. And I, I remember the, the next day feeling terrible, like feeling depressed, feeling down and thinking, well, it did nothing for me. It feels ho hollow. I just had this feeling of it feeling hollow and transactional and you know I, I didn't know which direction to go to maybe the the tantra way would have been the way that when yeah i imagine people might feel it's a bit it's a bit sort of shallow and materialistic and hollow and transactional but i had that sort of feeling before um before i even got ill and i've always unfortunately had that but again what you're saying is beautiful but i never heard anything like that yeah i mean it's really moving from this space of like transactional to transcendental like you see that this is the energy that brought you into this world so it's also an energy that can bring you you know beyond this world which is mm. super exciting um to me you're right we don't talk about these things it's not in our sex education our parents don't share it with us because they don't fucking know either you know and so it's, it's not in the media really even not really on no. the like unless you listen to youtube or podcasts you wouldn't even know this thing existed really and specific ones too and so to me what the 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 sense of um I, i've come to terms with this and again this is something i say this is my truth take it or leave it but it's my belief that because this energy is so powerful um it's very threatening to the institutions that govern us Oh. Uh, including religion, um, because religion was, you know, very, has always been very political, but religion, our education systems, our governing bodies. So when we fully claim and harness this energy, we become a threat, essentially, because we claim we're, we're, we're empowering ourselves. We mm. begin to, we're not necessarily, you know, slaves to this, these ideologies um, that, you know, to me are, you know, societally conditioned for us to, to follow. Mm. So that's why I believe that it's not super, um, super common. And so many people in this space get so censored because they're sharing this information from what I perceived. Yeah, I've had um, accounts deleted on Instagram. It's it's really fascinating uh, to, to kind of see how that's playing out. Um, and you're seeing that across various modalities or perspectives that are challenging, you know, the primary narrative. And, and I think that this is just one aspect of it so it's time for us to to reclaim that energy and, and, and educate ourselves in that way great yeah and if someone's like all oh, like yes this sounds like what i need in life what is the um since there's not much information on it um yeah. obviously there's all your content but what is the next step can you really like read about this do you have to like go to a coach do you have to like go to a class like because your partner probably isn't going to know about it either well chances are yeah, absolutely. That's a beautiful question. You know, there are so many different ways to kind of find yourself into this world. For me, it was definitely healing from my sexual assault. I kind of found myself in this modality. Um, but I definitely think that there are so many incredible, um, you know, free resources and resources that are low cost, things like podcasts. You know, I have one called Talk Tantra to Me. There's dozens other out there. There's books for men. What I would recommend is the book, The Multi Orgasmic Man, is a great starting point for women. Um, what is it called? The um, the map of arousal, the, the map of arousal, I think is, it's something like that by Sherry yeah. Winston is, is the author. Um, and, and, you know, there's YouTube just searching Tantra in there. I definitely think that's a good place to start, but there's lots of room for, you know, doing things like, you know, Tantra workshops, uh, retreats, 
Um, I even think, you know, this is a holistic practice. Tantra isn't just sexuality. It's also bringing this presence into every day of your life. So doing things like Mm. Kundalini yoga, you know, meditation, even the way that you eat and drink your food, just being really present for it, you know? Right. Um, And then obviously you can go as far as working with, you know, a professional, whether it's in a physical space or in a mentorship space, which is something that I do, but there's plenty of other, you know, people out there that are, that are accessible. If you kind of just search your area and, you know, something like Tantra or um, sacred sexuality or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is great. And I think you're on to a winner. Not that you care about it from a, (laughs) I'm just talking here from like a, uh got my business marketing head on unfortunately but like the way i see the world going is you know it's all linked to spirituality like you know the the next phase i think that we're into um particularly in sort of you know america and 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 western europe is you know meditations become more popular you know people are talking about spirituality more people are talking about yoga like kundalini and stuff like that so i th- I think we're on the the verge of people knowing about this more and more and more, and it's going to yeah. be very popular. And um, because the whole, you know, slightly spiritual movement is definitely, definitely happening. Um, so that's great that you're going to be well. There's probably a lot of people talking about it, but I haven't, I haven't really, I haven't really seen. And like, I'm a guy who is into a lot of things of personal development, but I've heard of it, but I've definitely not explored it. So it's great that you're offering that. And um, yeah, I just want to say, is there anything else that you think would be valuable, you know, for my audience that maybe I haven't covered that? Yeah, now you know where the conversation's gone, there's something you want to add or share? Yeah, again, I mean, kind of touching in on what you had just said, it's, to me, there's so many incredible modalities that can help you live a more expansive life. Again, touching on meditation and, and, you know, all of these various teachers and gurus out there. But to me, Tantra is really cool because it's, it is one of the only ones that I see as fully holistic because Mm. a lot of them aren't touching on sexuality, which is again, you know, such an innate part of uh, a part of who we are. So to me, Tantra is really great because it's, it's getting to the root. It's getting, you know, completely holistic looking at everything. And I think, again, a lot of, a lot of them don't address it because it is so taboo and because, um, you know, it's been something that's been so repressed. So just keeping that in mind. Um, otherwise I, I feel, I feel pretty good for my, uh, from, from my perspective, I would definitely say, you know, if people are interested in more, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, and I would love to follow up with one last question for you, if, if you're open to that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. This is something that I ask, you know, all of my guests and it is what awakens your arrows, what turns you on, what makes you feel erotically alive? Wow. That is a question to kill me on at the end. I was, I was, what turns me on? What feel, makes me feel erotically alive? Does it, does it have to be with someone else? Or is it what I feel turns me on in another person or is it just within myself? It's kind of up to interpretation, which is the beautiful part of, of, you know, where you can go with this question. Well, it's probably not the answer you want, but someone asked me not a similar question because I've never been asked a question like that before, but someone said to me, I don't know if this is me cheating. They said, you know, what's, what's the thing you find most attractive in a woman? Yeah. And, um, the thing I said was purpose. Beautiful. So I like, it's the most dull thing to me if a woman like, um, but I suppose you could say it's for anyone, but just, just for me, um, like has no purpose. And I think it's because I could say going back, some of these relationships I had felt transactional, Mm -hmm. you know, and hollow. So it's like, even now, like I can still feel that attraction, but if there's like, you know, your stereotypical Instagram model, who's gorgeous and looks like Pamela Anderson, but I'm like, oh, so what are your passions in life? Or what are you working towards or whatever? And it's like, like nothing. I'm just like, I'm just gone. I just can't, I just, so it's, it's almost like it's that life purpose calling. Like if I feel like someone is on like a mission to do something like um that's like the most sexually attractive thing for me because I'm like I sort of just get encapsulated by like oh I believe in that person or I want to root for that person or they stand for something or Mm -hmm. they feel like they have a purpose they they want to change the world in some way 
that yeah. very sort of, you know, someone who's inspirational and wants to to really make change with their life rather than just like some of the people I've met in the past who just want to sit around and get drunk at the weekends. Like, even if they're drop dead gorgeous, just can't do it anymore, Leo. I just can't do it. Uh, I love this answer. I'm so happy that you touched in on that because when you were speaking about, you know, the transactional sex and, and things like that earlier, yeah. I was specifically thinking about purpose and I, and I was thinking, oh, I want to mm. go back to that. So I'm so happy that you said it because I forgot about it. Um, and, I, and I think that that's a really good piece to talk about this idea that that's the energy that you're bringing to the world. And to me, um, that's the essence of, of what attracts us the most to, to ourselves and to each other. So to even say that, mm. you know, what turns you on the most is purpose. It's even the purpose within you. I see it as like a mirror to that. Would you agree? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm wondering because it's such a value to me. Like yeah. the most important thing I ever did with my life was putting out that health video because it had purpose and meaning and, you know, it took courage and I'm trying to change the world on some way for the greater good. So it's, it must be that, you know, I would love to see, you know, that value that I value so much of sort of, you know, a life purpose in someone else. Maybe, I don't know if it's a reflection of my own top values. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I think that too, it's saying that your highest truth doesn't always have to resonate, but to see that there's like a grander vision that is actually in alignment, just because the, the core of it, the core of any purpose to me is to bring more, you know, love into the world. And there's so many different vehicles mm. for how that happens. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have to be the same purpose, man, but I just want them to wake up passionate about something. And even if I don't agree with it, sometimes I'm like, I don't care, but I love that you love it. Like yeah. I love that, that you're on a mission, you believe in it. And um, uh, so it's, yeah, I would say that these days, you know, that's probably the number one thing that would turn me on and would get me extremely just swept away with someone and interested. Beautiful. So that's it. Um, I'm going to post Leola's uh, channel and details down below in the description so you can check her out, follow her. Um, uh, she's got some really great stuff to say. I hope you enjoyed this interview. And also, this is one of the first interviews, if not the first, I've ever done. So uh, click that like button for me if you did like me doing interviews with other people. And also some suggestions of who you maybe want me to collab with on a chat in the future maybe i'll reach out to them and then get them on the channel so there could be some good discussions going i don't just maybe want to be completely solo on my youtube channel but if i can bring in other people and other great minds to help you on your journey then that's ultimately a good thing so check out my website as always christopherdavidmitchell.com i've got some coaching on there and if you are struggling still with sort of feeling confident within your self-image your self-esteem with dating and you know trust me i've been there there was there was one point when you know i came out of hospital i had the ileostomy bag and i just felt like ugly i just felt like i'm never going to be able to get a date again or i'm not attractive but i've learned to overcome that in so many uh, ways but it did take time but if you do want help with that personally uh, for one-on-one -on -one coaching then uh, check out my website christopherdavidmitch.com and stick around on the youtube channel because i'm going to be doing more of this as i'm sort of engaging more with you guys my audience i realize you know you maybe want some help more on self-esteem or maybe self-image or maybe just confidence you know a few people are asking for self-esteem and self-confidence so that's why this episode came about today so hopefully it'll be more in the future and i welcome your suggestions for what you want on the channel and people i can do a cool collab with but that's it for today and um, till next time i'll see you then take care